Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Wake Up Late with Dougie Show. I am your host, Dougie Almeida, coming to you from Simpsonville, South Carolina, where I'm blending in every day. Uh, we apologize. We're not going every week. Basically, thank goodness I am on the road a bit and working, uh, and uh, that's a good thing. Uh, but we're going to come at you with some shows every other week, once a week, whenever we can do it. So thanks for joining us. Also, a little quick announcement. We will no longer be airing our shows on our Facebook fan page, only the clips if you want to watch the whole episode, we expect you and would like you. And we're going to force you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And uh, so I appreciate that. If you haven't already, go there now. Just Google it. It's We got to get more people because we got some ridiculous feed, you know, slash semicolon, ass cheek, whatever it is, as our, as our address on uh, YouTube. But go there so we can get our own, obviously, uh, 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 ID, you know, Wake Up Late with Dougie Show on YouTube. So we appreciate that. Uh, well, without further ado, I want to announce our guests from the Dope City Comedy Tour. Uh, my two good friends from Florida, originally from Florida Comics, uh, Mr. Uh, Tim Hanlon and Matt Bellick. Everybody, what's up, every guys? What's up? What's up, man? Morning, Dougie. Good to see you, Just fellas. Got Just got to wait today. <laughs> yeah, well, well I, that's know, I part of the show. I agreed to do this at like 6 p.m., and then you guys move it to 3. I'm like, oh, I got some alarm clock. Come I, on, I, man. It was on me. I had places to be. I'm uh, yeah. All right. Well, we're here. The sun's yeah. shining. No, nobody understands that. You know, as a comic, you know, you guys, we have different hours. You know what I mean? We, you know, we don't have to get up at the crack of dawn and go see clients and all that shit. Uh, we just got to get up and eat our Cheerios and think of something funny, right? I'm not turning off. Well, you you get up kind of early. Are you, are, are you an early riser by nature? I will sleep until I have to get up. I'm like a big sleeper. I'll stay up. Yeah. That's my thing. Yeah. I gotta sleep at four o'clock in the morning. So, but I can. That's I can my thing. Right now. That's my I'm thing. Unfortunately, sleep. like when I'm on the on the West Coast, I still I still manage money for a living. So when I'm on the West Coast, it's ridiculous. I was in Vegas a couple weeks ago, and I was getting up at five just because the market's open, you know. And I get that three hour, but you know, so by the end of the afternoon, like two o'clock, I'm like, I'm going to go to sleep again. But uh, yeah. but that is like, that is a like, sign like, of financial that is a sign of financial independence when you don't need an alarm clock anymore, you know. Or at least freedom. Not necessarily. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, mean, I don't know a lot of people without, without alarm clocks that aren't very financially secure. <laughs> it could go either way. It could yeah. Go either way. Um, well, let's talk about this a little bit, guys. First of all, the Dope City Comedy Tour, real successful. You guys originally with the Fresh Stone Drunk Tour, that moved on. We won't get into that shit unless you want to. But now you guys, between the two of you, have started the Dope City Comedy Tour. Uh, did you guys uh, wake up one day late and say, hey, we're going to name this? Who named it? Who is the person who can be be given we, this? We actually did think about it for a second, but and I'm such an idiot, though. Like, I didn't I didn't put together dope with heroin or like, I just meant dope like it was cool. And then everybody asks us, this is a drug show. Still, people, people like, think I thought we got show. away from that, but yeah, whatever. It's fun time. Do you want to tell them what we were going to call it first? <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we had... Uh, we were going to call it the freaking awesome, great, great, outrageous tour. And uh, yeah. you put that together. <laughs> kind of funny t shirt. F A G G O T. That's a yeah, funny t shirt. And uh, <laughs> oh, woke ass Marty Bellick over here wouldn't go for it. So, you know, I tried to be a little mm. bit more vanilla. We thought of some wild names, but uh, yeah, no, this, it, but he just thought oh, we had 20 way better names. We just can't do them. Not allowed. Clubs don't put them on the marquee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> like we had to down a little bit. Well, yeah. That's neat. Uh, yeah, because uh, now have you trademarked the name itself? Hmm. See, remember when you were saying the thing about people without alarm clocks? <laughs> like, yeah. Right, yeah. A little bit more. Some of that Dougie Almeida judiciary, you know, brain. <laughs> I don't really care about stuff like that. I mean, yeah. if somebody wants to take it, go for it. Yeah. <laughs> I do well, see a lot of shows now, like the dope show or stuff like that. And I'm, I'm kind of, oh, shit. There's even a guy doing the dope show in, uh, Washington, and I saw the yeah. poster, and it looks it looks just like Matt. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah. the dope show. It looked the guy looks. There's a lot of guys like your brother. We look a lot. I look a lot like a lot of guys. <laughs> yeah, he's he's got that he's got that uh, 
Matt's starting to have that. I, I look like I saw your photo in the fucking post office. Look, I am. Um, yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, and, I, and I know the gentleman and, and in all due honesty, I, the dope show, which I, I actually participated in at the uh, Ha Ha Comedy Festival back in 2019. Uh, he's had that that theme show out for a bit. And I think before um yeah. and i'm trying to remember his name now tyler I think his name is tyler um doing great again it's a it theme is. show it's a theme show and i'm sure if you haven't heard those people know it's basically when comics go on there do like a seven to ten minute set sober and then they'll go off and smoke a big old fatty and come back and do another five to seven minutes all high as hell and uh now, that's my the theme experience of that show. is that's every show <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's the theme oh we're gonna get some comic stone and then they're gonna try to do comedy i'm like that's every night at every club i've ever been to but well, that was the funny part that, about that show. Go ahead. Go ahead, Matt. How does that work out? Like, uh, and the second set is everybody all like, so uh, like, because when I smoke weed, I'm not very much, I'm not much different. I smoke weed every day. Yeah. yeah. Just, you just He's smoke. high right now. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the Wake and Make with Dougie show. Yeah. <laughs> but, well, that, but I've never seen that's this actually, show. But are people, do the comics kind of put it on like, I'm so high now. I don't even know my punchlines. Or they just do their jokes again. Like, I don't know. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I did it once. Like, and, how and to be high honest, did you have to get to? I mean, like, you must have, like, you're like, oh, I'm going to smoke a joint between sets. <laughs> yeah. That's, 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 like, fucking, that's like a tranquilizer on an elephant. What's that going to do, man? I know. Well, thanks for the fat guy joke. I appreciate it being associated with being an elephant. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> but no. And you're right. I mean, that's the thing. Most comics are already high beforehand, right? So I guess they say, yeah. please don't smoke before. But like anybody's going to listen to a, to a booker uh, or you know, a promoter. Right. Um, but, you know, I, I honestly, when I did it, I did it at, I said, the Ha Ha Comedy Festival at the uh, uh, NoHo, Com- NoHo Comedy Festival, the yeah. Ha Ha Comedy Club. Yeah. And um, I did it. And, you know, I went up, I went up pretty much sober. And, uh, and then I walked off stage and the, and the guy gives you a joint. Now, this isn't just, this is a pretty strong high okay. THC content. So, and you're supposed to smoke at least half of it, if not all of it. And, you know, for the most part, I smoke most of it. And then, of course, I'm walking back in and the comedian Tricks, who is there, he's walking out and uh, he says, hey, Doug, you want to smoke this joint with us? I'm like, yeah, why not? So I smoked more of that joint. So when I came in, I was fucked up. I mean, I was I was pretty high and shit. I was I got kind of got up there and I didn't have to act. I was pretty like I got I got to look at my notes. and I started getting booed. I'm like, all right, fuckers. And I just went off my, my shit. But. Uh, yeah, you're I right. Honestly, it's, uh... I actually don't like being high on stage. I, I, I used to a lot like earlier on, but I uh, like if I have a show that day, I won't even smoke weed that day until after the set. I don't like uh, it, it. Yeah, it. I'm just too. I'm not. I'm not. You're not a shark. You're not like you. you I'm so slow. Like everything process is so slow. And I don't like that. I don't like being like that on stage. Huh. So I mean, I smoke weed different. all the time. Like, like, like in, a, in my normal life, it's fine. If I'm just gonna go fucking hang out or go walk in a park or see a movie. I like to be high. But when you're on stage, yeah, it, it, yeah. I'm not a smart guy, so I can't, I can't afford to lose any uh, bandwidth at all. Yeah, yeah. before a show. Yeah, I, I, no. I get that. Like, I, I, there's two things. I definitely will not vape for some reason. If I vape that that THC vape, it definitely affects me. Like. Like the crowd reaction stuff, I'm not as smooth and quick. I definitely noticed that, so I'll never do that. And recently, I've changed it as well. I just won't smoke the day of because I just feel a little more lethargic, especially if you're doing more time. It's one thing if you're doing 15 minutes or so, but if you're doing 40 minutes or an hour, you're like, oh, I don't, don't want to get into that. Absolutely. I noticed it uh, recently because I guess, well, I was, I've been doing this for like almost two years now where I won't smoke before. And uh, I was hanging out at the club here, the Creek in the Cave in Austin. I was just hanging out on the patio. I wasn't on a show and having a couple of beers. Joints are going around. I'm pretty fucked up. And then some guy dropped off and the, the guy running the show is like, hey, do you want to just jump up, like go up next and do 10? And I'm like, sure. And uh, yeah, it's pretty fucked up up there. I and I remember why I stopped doing, <laughs> stopped doing it because it didn't go great. I'll say no now if I'm if I'm drunk. I, don't, I, don't, I won't go on stage. If I get offered a spot, I've had too much yeah. drink. I'm like, no, nah, I'll, I'll pass. I don't want, I don't want to be up there fucking... <laughs> I'll, I'll, still, slur. I'll still go up there. Yeah, you, yeah, no, no, yeah, you, you yeah. did the spot. It was bad. Nobody enjoyed it. But yeah. <laughs> well, that, that's the thing. I mean, how hard? That's 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 a, a funny uh, situation there because you know, uh, asking asking. Uh, I was talking to somebody recently about this, like the the, the ethics, you know, the uh, uh, whether you ask for spots when you're on shows. You know what I mean? And uh, you know, generally, 
you know, I, if I'm at a club watching, I'm there to support, I will not ask, obviously, for a spot, you know, especially yeah. the day of a show, maybe beforehand, you know, if you guys are in town, say, hey, you know, if you guys have a spot, which I've never been on a, a dope city tour show ever in my life, but maybe one of you these days. We got to get, we're, we're sparing you. <laughs> we gotta get yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, but you know what I mean? But that's like, like you know, and uh, we had some we had some incidents here locally where somebody who was so working like at Club I asked you when we were in West Palm a little bit ago, and I think you you might have already moved or you were on the road. Yeah, I wasn't around. You're too yeah, busy, Dougie. You're too busy, man. Stars won't line up. Tough get. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate it. But no, man. It, but uh, but that you know that, where people do that. You know, they'll ask for a spot. I, we had a situation where somebody who was working at the club would go up to the the, the headliner out the night of the show and say, "Hey, you mind if I do a spot?" You know. Not a not a cool move, right? Not for me. No. I, if, no. If, if I ask for a spot, which I almost never do, it would only be like as a spot on the show. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I won't go to a show anymore and ask for a guest spot. I just. I just rather would hang out and sit in the back. And, if the show's already if out. the show's already booked, yeah. Like, what do you add? Like, like, they got it. They don't. Need, yeah. They don't need you. No they one's don't. looking for comics. That's yeah. what's kind of funny to me. Like, <laughs> I get messages. Hey, if you need an opener. I'm like, I never need an opener. <laughs> like, right. But you know, do your shot. It's fine if, if we got spots and uh, we're in a town that I'm. That I'm I, that I don't know a lot of people, and somebody hits us up, then I'm, you know, I think I there's nothing. Post the there's show. nothing wrong with asking for spots like in advance. You see something pops up a month out, and you're like, hey, you got any spots? And that's fine. I'm just saying, like, the day of yeah. the show, it's already yeah. booked. They By, got it. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think you're just messing By, with the show for people that are already on the lineup. I don't, I don't really care for it. Yeah. You, it's not it, my thing. you know, it's, it's, it's like this. And I, I did mention that some of the local comics, I go, you know, if somebody, if I'm at a show and they ask, cause it's hard to turn down a spot. If somebody asks, unless you're like you said, unless you're just not in the mood or you just don't feel it or you're not, you know, but you know, you do. And if they say, Hey, do five minutes, you know, if I do it, I'll do four or I'll do, you know, I'll purposely do a minute or two less. Right. Uh, to show That's respect for those people. Yeah. The way we've started doing it now is we're, we're dual headlining now. So we're both, Pretty much doing forty at night. Not a lot of. It's not a lot of time left, you know. So like right. guest spots on our show doesn't really work, you know. I'll, we like I like to have somebody open the show and do ten, and then it's just me and Matt from that point on. Like we were doing shows right. where we'd have you know a host and a feature and a guest spot, and it's fun. But then both of us are cutting our time from forty to twenty five, you know. I, I don't know. And then of course nowadays. Sometimes we're doing three man. We'll have the opener do fifteen. <laughs> Some reason they just can't say goodnight at fourteen fifty five. I don't know what oh. it is. Man. Fifteen turns into seventeen. Right? I'm like, yeah. yeah, it's fifteen minutes, bro. The light's been off for three minutes. Just say goodnight. It's good. We got it from here. I don't know. So yeah, yeah we're not doing the we're not doing the five guy shows anymore. Yeah. But maybe in California when when I got a bunch of friends out there, you know, a bunch of good comics that all can really rip it for seven minutes or whatever. But if it's just a regular show, we're doing one host as 12. And then now as a co as a co-headline show, do you guys uh, flip flop on who closes and stuff like that? Yeah, pretty much every, every, show every other flop. show. We just... yeah, it's funny cool. because the you'd think like the, the coveted spot would be going last. They had like that, the, the headlining spot. But we the, the way the show runs with us, he's doing we each do about 35, 37. And then you got the opener to 15, but uh, whoever goes last half, if not more of your set is just check drop. So that, that first headlining spot is the sweet spot. You got a guy doing 15, yeah. warms him up, then you got your spot. And then by the time the next guy goes up, now they've already seen almost an hour of comedy. They're getting checks and that spot sucks. <laughs> so yeah, it's yeah. Just never <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, I love when some I love when I go to a show like that. A lot of these in South Carolina, you know, they're they're booked by a lot of you know local comics and like, you know, all right, well, you want to go up. There's two, you know, two two veteran comics there. Like, well, what do you want to go up? You want to go up last or or second? No, I'll go up second or last. That you know, I would why the hell would you choose to go up last? You know, especially when you have let's say two or three guest spots going up doing ass eating jokes. You, you know, next thing you know, you you know, you're going up after an hour of comedy and you're like, oh fuck. And the check drop like well, that's the thing, is going on. Some people, it's just an ego thing. They want to go, oh, I'm, I'm the headliner. I'm the, you know, whatever. But for us, it doesn't really matter. We're doing the same time. It's, it's, just, a, it's just flipping every other night. But um, it's just the way. And that's the thing, too. Well, that's another reason why we stopped so many guest spots. When 
we would have wh- whichever one of us would have to go last, and there'd already be a yeah. host, a couple guest spots, and the other guy was. By the time you're going up, there's like over an hour of comedy. They're they're checking out, you and know, like, and you got to go yeah. and do forty. Yeah. It's just like, and, it's, and then the guest spot has like this sweet seven minutes right in the middle of the show where it's perfect. They're taking, and you're sitting there going, "I'm going on in an hour and ten. Minutes. They're taking the good time. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. and. Because, you know, a lot, a lot of bookers don't realize that the headliner, you know, the shows I book, a lot of headliners say, look, I want to make sure I'm up 35, 45 minutes into the beginning, you know, from the show. That's exactly Anything right. past that. Sure. You know, you it's just, a 10, 12 minute opener, a 20, 25 minute feature. And that's it. And get them up. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. People don't realize how, that, how big of it, how just that slight difference of a few minutes can make. Right. You know, and it's like, why don't you like, why would you like, you know, people, I, especially with my shows, Tavolinos and stuff, they're like, well, why, you know, people keep asking for guest spots. I'm like, look, man, first of all, it's not, it's not, it's a pro show. You guys have all, thank you, we've all done Tavolinos. Um, you know, oh, it's not an easy fun, room. Dude. Yeah, it's not, it's not an easy room. So, you you know, you, it's not, guest spots to me are meant for touring comics who happen to be in town that you'd love to get, right. you know, introduction. Uh, you know, hey, a drop in kind of thing, right? Yeah. Well, like I said, like if we're in a city and another comic that I've known for 10 years happens to be in that same city and they come hang out. Yeah. Go do five. Go do seven. You know, I, I enjoy it. I love having friends on the show, but yeah, I'm not really looking for it anymore. You know, also, I think 90 minutes is a cap on a show. After you go more than 90 minutes, I don't care. You know, there's very few comics that can hold the, the attention. Well, we see that out here a lot on the. The, like the locally produced, like the showcase style shows, they'll put 20 comics doing 10 minutes and everyone runs their lights and the show ends up going two, two and a half hours long. And you're just like, what are you, what are you, what are you doing? That's not good. Yeah. Not to me. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I'd rather the show be 60 minutes than two hours. You know? Yeah. That's, yeah. that's kind of like the, that's kind of like the casino deal. You know, casino shows that want to get people back out gambling. Like I was right, just at right. LA comedy club, you know, and I, I was doing the feature spot and the feature spot was 17 minutes. You know, and it's like, oh, that's great. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and then you, you wonder. Yeah. And I fucking ran the light. At that. <laughs> no, but, you know, but no, but it's glad. And, I, you know, it's anytime. I don't mind. I mean, I saw somebody recently get mad. Like, why are they? You know, I'm like, like even me at first, I go, I wonder they're just giving me less time. And I, I put it together. I've been doing it long enough. It's a casino and they do less time. Um, but, you know, if it, I did it's JP's insane, comedy. Man. Yeah, right. It was like Jay did JP's comedy club. I got the headline that back in January and their, their headliners do 30 minutes because they have a few, they have like the, the, the owner of the club does a spot, you know, and there's a, some local comics there pretty funny that do, you know, five, seven minutes, whatever spots. So that I have no problem Washington? doing 30 minutes. Hmm. Yeah. Where, where's that at? Is that in Washington? No, in uh, Arizona. Uh, was it Gilbert, Arizona? It's a fun room, Gilbert, man. Yeah. yeah. Hey, do you ever see it go well? I've seen a couple of clubs where the owner opens up and does time. Have you ever seen it go well <laughs> ever? Uh, I, I well, first yeah, of all, say, yeah, 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 the mother, yeah, yeah, the mother yeah. yeah, the yeah. Out, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, Jim does a good job. Jim Perry owns the JP's comedy club. He's funny. He does, you know, he does a good job, but yeah, I mean, it, it's like, you know, listen, I, I won't mention the club that's in Sarasota, Florida, but you know, that's you know the, one I was the, the owner of the, yeah. Yeah, the corner club do 30 fucking minutes as an MC, you know? And it's like, uh, I mean, I don't know if I'm ever going to get booked there again, but, um, there's you know, a, there's a couple of, uh, yeah, that, where that seems to be the, the thing. there's one, yeah, in, right? uh, there's one, there's one in the Dallas area now where the guy owns the club and his wife and they go up and do a whole, sh- and it's is that the Plano one. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a good nice. club and it's, it's really funny. It's two letters, <laughs> two letters. Uh, whatever. Excuse me. I want to go. I want to go out there. I've never been to Austin. Uh, I did any shows in Texas besides the World Series of Comedy once at the old. Um, that was at uh, Comedy Club I got there in the in the mall, but but that was it. Did the World Series of Comedy there? But oh, really? um, wouldn't. Yeah, well, Texas. I've had cool, man. Like, LOL. Did you do San Antonio. Yeah, yeah, that was it. Um, yeah. But yeah, I would I would love to go out there, and I have some friends that I've asked to like uh, to good word of the hyenas and some of the clubs that are there, but you guys, you know, Austin's a big comedy scene now. It is. Yeah. There's four, four clubs. In there. I was just walking Next around. Week, I was just walking around downtown. And, uh, so they got the Vulcan and then Joe Rogan's is opening up. They're literally four or five storefronts away from each other. 
and you go up a block over a block, you got Creek in the Cave. Those are three like major clubs. And then you've got little, like even like East Austin Comedy Club. They've got like Vita Room, Cap City, Cap City, Belvedere. I mean, there's, yeah, that, that's six legit what, comedy clubs. When you're, well, when you're downtown Austin, you could walk to five, six clubs on any given night that are all running shows. And it's, so it's yeah. pop. And then several, then you got Speakeasy, you got Four House. I mean, it, yeah. Mm-hmm. You got a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, op- like, op- a lot of open mics and, sh- and clubs and shows that, you know, the cl- local comics can get time on. Oh. There's no, there's, there's no shortage of time here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it, it is, it is good. You, the thing is, it's, 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 it's crazy. It's, it's like the wild west out here. Cause it's, it, it's still like an infantile scene. Like it's, 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 it's constantly growing. And a lot of people have came here and you have uh, a lot of people that don't, they don't necessarily have a lot of experience. I mean, they're two, three, four year comics and, uh, and they're, they're blowing up. They're getting all this stage time. It's good for them, you know? So it's like, you're, you're looking at it going like, wow, like you can really come on here and yeah. yeah get some, that's awesome. Work your way up quickly here. Yeah. yeah it's it's awesome. not like LA or New York where, you know, you're dealing with guys that are 20 year comics. I mean, everyone out here is under 10 years. So that's I mean, you can, yeah, a lot of that kids. A little more of a level playing field. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Here in, uh, here in Greenville, we have the main thing we have every week. We have a, a open mic at the comedy zone on Thursday weekly, but I think it's one of the best open mics around because number one, they get 40 or 50 people that audience members that pay 10 bucks to come see it, which is, yeah. you know, I tell some of the comics, yeah, I go, this is unheard of for the most part, you know, to have this many regular, you know, actually audience members paying to come see you guys. Uh, and it's weekly. Yeah. So it's awesome. You know, uh, but it's other than that, there's a couple plug. little, yeah. Other than that, there's a couple little open mics around. There's a good Monday night here at the place called the coffee underground. But aside from that, there's, uh, got a couple of other ones like, starting. Uh, any privately produced shows, you know, that are, that are good. You know, cause, yeah, there's a couple. As a matter of fact, I just got the, something called the Palmetto Distillery, which is over there in uh, Anderson. I think I just got booked for that for May or yeah, May. Uh, you know, something. And I'm actually looking for locations. There's a really dope spot, which is in um, in South Carolina near near Charleston. Uh, gentleman books on a Monday, and that place is always jamming on a Monday night. And he brings in some really well known comics on a Monday. You know, Monday night isn't that hard to book for a headliner. Yeah. I mean, that was a theory with Tra- Tavolino. It was a Wednesday. You try to catch comics that are working during the weekends. You know, yeah, they gladly, you know, make a little less money on a Wednesday just to, you know, fill the date. Um, so, yeah, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot of work. I mean, the difference for me being here than in Florida, it's a lot better because I only have to drive a few hours to get most places. Where in Florida, you know, you, you, you fucking yeah, you know, you turn into yeah. Magellan. <laughs> you, know, you turn into Magellan to try to go to fucking digs. All right, so let me get into our segment. Uh, let me ask you, every, uh, fellas. Uh, first of all, we'd like all right. to say rest in peace, Mr. Richard Belzer, very well-known comic, obviously, who recently passed away, Munch. And, uh, you know, one of those one of those comics that just had their own style, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, I know Tim long enough where that look just kind of looked a little funny there, like he's not a big fucking Belzer fan or something. No, <laughs> he, was pouring, he was pouring one out, like you do it, but it's, he's holding it with Croy. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, pouring one out for Bells, a little honor, but like with a key uh, I got gotcha. Croy. You know, yeah, exactly how, tr- how traditional. Um, mm-hmm. Let me ask, since we spoke about Florida, you guys were started in Florida. You guys miss Florida? I, I miss it. Um, <laughs> like, I, I, I got, you know, I have a lot of friends and family down there. I always have fun down in Florida. I do, comedy-wise, it's not like I don't like the scene, but I, I'm glad to, it's just weird, because that's like where I first started. So, like, I always yeah. look at, there's a soft spot for it. I, I love it, but like I do like going out, branching out, growing, seeing new stuff. Like I, I don't, I don't know if I'd ever want to move back and live there full time for comedy. I miss the city of Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale was, was a great city. I loved living in Fort Lauderdale. I love the people there. The comedy scene. Um, again, again, you've been doing it long enough. All right, I'm good. You know, if you're yeah. five years or under, it's a great scene. I mean, they got great clubs. It's good. I mean, there's there's plenty of work between those three clubs you can get. Um, that, you know, there's probably produced shows. There's Billy and Mike. I mean, like, especially even since I've been, the scene's yeah. great. It's yeah. a great scene. I just, uh, I mean, I go back there a lot, so it's not, it's almost like I can't miss it because I'm there. My family's still there, so I'm there a lot. We we work the clubs there regularly, so I'm there a lot. It hasn't gotten to the point where I'm like, oh, I miss I miss Florida. There's a slight. Have you gone? Back? I didn't live there since. Have you gone back since, since you moved? Yeah, and you know it's funny because every time I go back, I realize how much how little I like Florida anymore. 
Like one, right. like one of the things, you know, like one of the things that like here in South Carolina, people are courteous. They're, they're kind, you know, they're, they're patient. You know, every time I get on the highway in Fort in Florida, it's like everything, everybody's in a fucking rush, mad, crazy drivers, aggressive drivers and shit, you know, and there seems to be traffic no matter what time of day it is, no matter what day it is, when you're on the road in Florida, they're always fucking traffic now. You know, it was one of the funny um, things when I when I moved from Florida the first time I moved to Los Angeles and realized that everyone in L.A. is so much nicer than everyone in Miami and Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. I was like, you just heard that L.A. was so mean. And it's like, oh, no, these people are they would I would walk into Walgreens and the cashier would say good morning. I'm like, I go, what? Yeah. Please. <laughs> Stopping me. Being on a shop or something. I was like, what's going on here? Everyone was friendly compared to South Florida. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Everyone's on edge. South Florida, for me, and I love it, but there's a, how do I put it? It feels almost like a time capsule. Like a lot of the, when I go back, I feel like nothing has changed much, you know? As far as like the scene, the comedy. Yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. I mean, just not like, I, mean, I guess that's, I don't know. And may, maybe I just feel the way since where I started, but I go back and it's like, you, see, you know, you see the same, uh, well, I see there's a lot of new faces now, but yeah, I just feel like it's the same, you know, a lot of the same shows, a lot of the same stuff. The improvs are booking the same fucking four people. So it's just like, it's very, you know, time capsule Where I, I like yeah. to live in Chicago, living in LA, living now in Austin. I, at least for me, too, it helps me stay creative, stay moving. I can fall yeah. into a rut down in Florida pretty easily, you know? Yeah, I yeah, agreed. And uh, I got to tell you, the weather wise, you know, I, I, I was there in the summer. I'm like, oh, geez. And it, it was really nice to not have to worry about your house being blown off or blown away in the summer. Like every summer, you had to fucking worry about a hurricane. How, how um, cold did it get for you in the winter in, in South Carolina? It, you know, two stories there. First of all, there's a local comic does a joke about snow here in Greenville. It's like it, it's like a sex life. It doesn't happen often, and when it does, it doesn't last long. Um, you know, like the last year, the first year we lived here during the winter, my mother in law was thinking about moving here. You know, she loved it because it's beautiful in Greenville. It's all green. You know, it's, it's 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 a beautiful place. Great downtown. One of the, really nice downtown area. So you're not really just in the boonies, you know, um, so right. you got a lot of shit to do. And, uh, my mom, oh, my mother was going to move here. And then we had the snow in January of 20, uh, was it 2021 or 2022. And, uh, my mother's like, Oh no, I can't be around snow. I'm like, thank you, mother nature. But, um, you know, that was a blessing. But this year, like November, December was like in the 19, 20 degrees. It was fucking cold. This, it didn't snow, but it was cold. Um, but the, the big difference is the summer, you know, it gets a little warmer in the summer, not that ass, you know, swamp ass, hot humidity, but at night it's in the seventies, you know, you can have an 80, 90 degree day, but in the night, That's what we don't have in South Florida. It, it'll be, it was like that in LA. It'd be warm in the daytime and then 50 at night, you know, I was like, this is perfect. Yeah. I'm used to it being 84 degrees at night. It just never changed. So that I don't miss. Yeah. Probably, so. Yeah. So I, I you know, I still have, I, still... I like to be able to put a jacket that... on as a fat guy. Yeah. As a fat guy, I like to yeah. be able to put a jacket on, cover me up, you know? Now, it's funny you bring that up, Matt. I wasn't going to bring that up. Now, yeah, I have noticed a bit of a change in your uh, <laughs> in your body comp- composition because you're always a thin yeah. guy, as I remember. And then I asked yeah. him one time, I go, what's going on with Matt? I go, holy shit, you know, he's he's kind of, you know, he's getting a little heavier. What's, what's causing this? You know, when you see a guy who's thin, you know, start getting yeah. a little bit of a, you know, what, what 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 is up with you? What's going on, man? Well, I'm in my mid thirties now. I'm just Tyler. getting I'm just getting older. <laughs> yeah, 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 I don't know. I mean, that was twenty four. Oh, I was twenty four when you met me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I see your soccer picture, Dougie. <laughs> <laughs> doing judo at one twenty five. Oh yeah, I think I weighed that when I was in elementary school. But but yeah, you're right. You know, it's amazing as you get older because you don't. You, it's things you don't care. Now you have a girl, right? You know, so. That's a bit of a bit of a difference yeah. too. I mean, look, I don't you know, cook and go. I don't live yeah. a. I'm not. I don't. I don't exercise. I don't really eat great. I, I mean, I, I know why it's happening, but uh, in my when you knew me in my twenties, I mean, I drink beer every night. I ate like shit. I was just twenty. You know, I couldn't gain a pound. Yeah. Now it's it's caught up to me. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. Yeah. Well, my doctor prescribed me a diet, so I'm actually I was up to two seventy something. I'm at two fifty now, so I've lost some weight. Uh, I gotta right. gonna get probably get down yeah. to two twenty myself. Uh, to get in I'm shape, so yeah. I'm going yeah, up, we'll, so I'll meet you at 220. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll save my jeans, so once we get to that point, I'll give you all my old jeans. Yeah, dude. You I'll raid your closet. I'll, 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 I'll yeah. raid a new wardrobe. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I'll save them for you, like my hand-me-downs. Yeah. Um, 
let me ask you guys are on the road a lot. So uh, let me ask you guys, are you still enjoying the road? You've been a few years out there and uh, just wonder if you're still enjoying the road. I love it. I love, there's nothing better than like, like I said, I don't like to wake up, but if I got a 6 a.m. flight, I'm up at 4 a.m., bags packed. I don't really pack. I just throw my shit in the bag. <laughs> and like, I'm on the, I'm on, I'm on the plane. I, can't, I, love, I love hitting the road. You, yeah. you travel yeah. a lot. You know how it is. Like the last day of being on the, like when you're like, you're on the road for a couple of days. On that last day, you're like, fuck, all right. This is a lot. I want to get home. I'm sick of this. Well, then you're home for like four days. You're like, I got to get the fuck out of here. I want to go back on the road. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah. Also, there's a sense of satisfaction when you're out on the road doing good clubs. It's like, oh, this is why we're doing all this, you know, the, the dumb stuff. You know, I love, yeah. love. We just did San Diego. I don't know if you've been to the new Mike, Mike Drop Club out there. It's, no, yeah. It, no. Such an, it's, a, it's, it's so way down you know it's just so easy the crowd's fantastic people come out and it's like this is this is i can do this every day yeah, yeah you know i will say that you say i like the road excluding a handful of cities <laughs> well, some yeah. cities I don't well, really san, know. san diego san nice. diego i yeah. like going to yeah beautiful yeah. san diego yeah a nice club. Well, that's, I'm gonna, i think i'm gonna get to that question you're right and but you're right like i, I told somebody they think oh it must be great to tr-. like the, the worst part about being on the road is like saturday mornings you know, you guys tour together, so that's good. But sometimes when you're by yourself and you're in a hotel yeah. on a Saturday, just nothing, you're in Oklahoma or some shit, you know, there's nothing to do. Yeah. You know, you're just fucking sitting around. But that's why, like, for me, like two weeks, I don't like to stretch it past two weeks. I'm going to be doing Florida. I'm actually in April. I'm doing some Florida shows. And then from there, I'm doing Bahamas for two weeks. So I'm going to be out of town for like three weeks. Ooh. And I'm actually, you know, I mean, Atlantis is going to be pretty That's good to be in here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Two weeks in Atlantis. Oh, oh my God. How are you going to get through all those Saturday mornings? Oh, it's going to be rough. But I'll tell you yeah. this, though. It's just, it's being away from, like, everyone misses their own bed. You miss, yeah. you know, it's like, you miss your routine. Yeah, just, just, that's a long, three weeks is a long fucking time, dude. That's a long yeah. time to be out there. Even yeah. at the height, I try to, like, pre-COVID, we would, we would, 10 days was a solid run. You know, more than 10 days. Yeah. We did one. It was 20. 10 days. That was, it was 20 and it ended on a 24 hour drive. We drove oh. the last day of the show. The last day of the tour, we drove from Spokane to LA straight through. And that was, that's oh, shit. pushing. That's pushing. Yeah. It you guys stop and having... sleep or what the fuck? What do you do when you're in the car that long? You stop and just wrote. Wrote. We just wrote that's the one we still had. We had a band. We had three of us. We still had the retard with us, so we would uh, <laughs> we would just mix three you know three people driving going shifts. It wasn't that bad. Uh, are you guys still? It was a twenty four hour drive, and we stopped at McDonald's at about six in the morning and locked the keys in the car. <laughs> oh fuck! <laughs> it's like we're never, it's never going to end. It's never going to end. That sucked. Yeah. Those are the and things it's that like fuck, you're not like... going for the show. It's like the tour is done. We're just getting home. Oh, that was rough. That was a rough drive. That, yeah, the, the, the coming home part's definitely rough. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, speaking, you know, of the retard, as you mentioned, are you guys still on uh, talking terms? I mean, you know, you guys. Uh, I, really, I should I should be a dick and say that, but I don't know. No, we I haven't we haven't talked in a while. Well we just kind of split. You know. There was a yeah, little well, bit of uh, right right when we split. There's a little bit of fucking chirping, but we just yeah, leave him alone. He does his own thing. We do our thing. Whatever. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, I mean, Tim knows my back, my 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 history with that particular person wasn't that strong, especially after the, uh, the was it the Jay okay, Risk room? And the, know, I don't know one person that likes that guy. I'll just say that. Yeah, I mean, I just had somebody, I had somebody come up to me recently and ask me, not, well, the last month or two, asked me about him. I'm like, ah, oh, you know, whatever. I didn't say anything. He's like, why does that? Why does that guy think I want to hear his advice? I'm like. <laughs> I just started. Like, I'm like, I know. I know what I mean. <laughs> what are you telling Jimmy how to do it? Oh my god, dude! Uh, I, I the worst. The worst part was I did it. I've been doing it for thirty years. You tell me how to do it. Uh, and you know, and J- Tim will remember this. The old Fort Lauderdale Comedy Club. You know, and Tim, like when we were in Fort in the Florida scene. You know, Tim and I were more of the comics who were working. And we'd see a comic who was working hard, you know, and working at it. You know, I remember one time I, you know, I sat back and gave him some advice, you know, like, hey, man, this and that. And Tim was there that night, too. And we're giving him advice. And then, you know, I, I spent time trying to, you know, I liked the kid. I was like, hey, he's trying. He's working hard. 
And then the, when, the minute he had a fucking chance, he fucking turned on me like a snake. You know, I'm like, what a fucking cunt. You know, like, you know, like, you know, like it's, it's one thing if, you know, you know, it's just people don't get along like me and fat chops. We don't like each other. You know what I mean? I almost got to the point where I wanted to strangle that big fat fuck, but you know what I mean? For some of the things he did, but at the same time, that's, that's there. Gonna get, have to get one of those tree climbing fucking chains. Um, yeah, but, uh, well, that's good. Let's move on anyway. It's, it's, it's funny. Uh, what are some of the most, uh, let me ask you this. We'll be, I'll go back to this question. What was one of the, uh, what is your, you, what do you mention San Diego? What some of your favorite states to perform in? And what, maybe without mentioning the state that's the least favorite or maybe why it was the least favorite state. I'll just tell you right now, my least favorite, Syracuse <laughs> Funny Bone. I don't Syracuse like, Funny Bone. And I don't like that right now. <laughs> Every time. Yeah. I mean, the shows go okay, but it's just. The shithole. The the crowd is dumb as fuck. It's not even like yeah, like not even like yeah. mad at the bookers or the owners or anything. It's just the crowd that comes out. They're and we go. It's not even like we went there once and had a sour taste. We did it what fucking six times. We've done it a lot. Yeah. Every time we keep going back. Right? Maybe crowd. it's us. I don't know. Maybe yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's but, just it doesn't feel fun. It's like ah, oh, this is it. It it's not a low point because it's a, it's an A club. And then yeah. you go do it, and you're like, "This is not what I. This is not great. <laughs> it's not rewarding at all." But there's most. I mean, obviously, most. Most. I, I love the Midwest. I love. Uh, I mean, like, fucking Omaha is amazing. I'll tell you what, Texas is great. Des Moines is great. Texas is great. I, Which I, I love, would never have thought, dude. Raleigh is one of my favorites in the whole country. Raleigh yeah. is great. It's weird though, because like we were talking about this. Next week we're doing Tempe and Phoenix. They're 20 miles apart from each other. Tempe is awesome every time we go there. And Phoenix kind of sucks every time we go there. Yeah. And it's like, how is that? It feels like it's the same people. I don't know. 40 it's minutes weird. apart. Yeah. And then, like, same thing in Florida. Yeah. You have the Orlando Improv. It's one of my favorite clubs in the country. And then you have the Tampa Improv. It, it just, it's never fun. It's, I don't know. It's wild. Well, I've said this on record. Tamp, Tampa's a shithole. Um, you know, yeah. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about Tampa. Um, but yeah, you know, what's, what's to me is interesting is what's interesting is like you mentioned that like Funny Bone, one of the top con you know clubs in the country, you know chain, con you know etc. But you know what it like I Syracuse, I've done um, Utica, Utica, whatever it was recently in December, a club called Fat Cats, and the crowd was you know. So is it you know is it is when you have a great club like that to book, and then like you mentioned him, you still go back like. What would it take to not go back? Like, you know, sometimes you've had those crowds like that where you just every time you go there, it's like because to me, the benefit of doing comedy is just that that feedback. Right. The feeling you get when you're on stage. That's the reason we do it. You know, that that great feeling. Mm -hmm. But if the crowd is not really. But if the crowd isn't doing it, what would keep you from wanting to go back? Well, I'll tell you this much. I would never book Syracuse on like a one off. Like we usually lump it in like we'll go up to the northeast. We'll do Albany, Syracuse, Hartford. We'll try to get a spot in the city. Uh, we could try to link it with Atlantic City. So we'll go up and do a run in the Northeast, and it's part of it. I would never just go to Syracuse and home. I would never. Yeah. Would, there was a place we did in Philly. There was a place we did in Philly that we're like, we're not doing this place again. Well, that was, yeah, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> that was, well, Phil yeah, it was, it yeah. But it wasn't like a club. This, was, this, wasn't, a, this wasn't a club. It was like they... They had a venue. Kind of like, like Tavolinos. It was like a business. It was comparable to Tavolinos. Right. They did it like upstairs and it was just. It was a uh, showroom in a venue, in a, in a place. I remember getting paid yeah. from that. It, it, they packed it out, right? We had kind of like a handshake deal. Uh, you know, hey, we'll see what ticket sales are. We'll take care of you. Kind of. And we're like, whatever. We're taking. We're, we're, <laughs> Always a good way to do business. This yeah. is when we were very yeah. young. We'll and I'll leave it up to you guys. <laughs> so we do two shows. It was a Friday night, and this guy, I mean, the room probably sat 60 people, and he sold them both out, sold them both out, selling $20 tickets. He's upgrading people, and they, they had, like, these craft cocktails. The guy owns the place. He's making buku bucks. So then he's like, all right, I got this, like, private party DJ thing. Uh, you you got to clear out and, and meet me downstairs. And then, like, I'd, like, meet him in the alley, like, an hour <laughs> later behind the place to get paid, and he pulls a wad of cash. And he has to peel through 
$2,100 bills <laughs> to get to the three twenties that were in there. He feels like he hands me 60 bucks. He goes, here you guys go. And what I'm the like, fuck? What the? Well, dude, I was like, what are you? There's like, oh, the dude, like, literally $60. What hand? So these guys, so I went in the alley. So these guys are like waiting on the street and I walk back to them and they're like, what'd we get? I'm like, here's 20 for you. Here's 20 for you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Maybe that's why. Was, I knew there was something about that place. We, like, ah, we, went, we got an Uber and a cheesesteak and we were done. That was it. Fucking <laughs> unbelievable. That, that, you know, the, the door brought in $2,200, $2,400. Yeah. And they, oh my God. Oh, the guy had a lot of cat. I'm telling you, like he was peeling back hundreds. And I'm like, oh, after he pulled back a couple hundreds, I'm like, oh shit, we're going to make a lot of money. Like I thought he was going to give me a stack. And he's like, there's a couple twenties. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? All right, we're that's, good there, man. I don't yeah, that's there. fucking. No, we went nuts. back once. We yeah, did go back. We went back, but we had a different deal. We're like, all right, well, we're gonna get paid this. We took a guarantee the next time. So I'm like, dude, you gotta. Yeah, I'd guarantee. hope so. And it wasn't great. At least we had some. At least that, we had knew what we were gonna get. But then that, there, was, that, that that kind of reminds me one time back in the old days of the New York Comedy Club. We had a rock and roll comedy show, and it was me, Perry Sack, and Lenny Travis, Wise Guys Comedy, and we did a show there with the band, and it didn't bring that many people, so. I, you know, I, I wanted to pay the band. I felt bad because they lugged all the equipment and shit. You know, so I gave those guys, a, you know, 20, 10, 20 bucks each. It was a horrible thing, like, even for the show. And then it was me, Lenny, and Perry, and I gave them like a couple bucks each. Because <laughs> there was so much for really left. Yeah. And then Lenny looks at, you know, Lenny looks at me and thinks of that, that Creed song. He paid us only one, <laughs> one dollar. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, unbelievable. So um, what was, uh, uh, let me ask you guys, what yeah, yeah, yeah. What was uh, what is the, one of your most memorable moments on stage? Hmm. For me, a fun one was in Cleveland. I uh, we're on stage, the place is packed, and uh, the club the club was worried. <laughs> we had a by his definition, we had a really urban crowd, and we're a bunch of whiteies, and he didn't <laughs> think the show was going to go great or something, so. They hired like local PD cops to like be security in the fucking showroom. Like, okay, whatever. Like real Cleveland police officer. Yeah, like <laughs> CPD, dude. So we're uh I'm on stage and there's a a woman in the front row, black lady, mid middle age. She's just talking to her friend. Like there's not a show. She's front row, like, there's not a show happening. She's like, Oh, we gotta go to Susan's house next Saturday. And I'm like just so I'm like, you're not going to say nothing. I was like, take it easy, please. You know, I'm like, yeah. And then, so then there's like a woman, maybe late twenties, white girl sitting behind her and shushes her. She goes, shh. Ooh. And the uh, <laughs> black lady didn't like that. Turns around. She's like, who the fuck shushing me? Starts yelling at her. She's like, you, you just do you. I'll do me. Why don't you shut the fuck up? You do you. Don't worry about me. And I'm just like, all right, everyone just do themselves. Everyone take it easy. <laughs> like relax. And then a cop, the cop who's like security comes over. And uh, he's like tapping on the shoulder. He's like, "Ma'am, you gotta be quiet." He looks at me. He's like, "You want her out?" I'm like, "Nah, she's fine. Just, just take it easy. You can go." So he then moves to the side of the stage. Now, the side of the stage, there's a black curtain behind. Like the whole back wall is a curtain. This guy thought there was like a wall behind the curtain, but it literally just is curtaining off like a storage area. So he goes to the side. But this is an improv too, so it looks like that's a wall. Cleveland improv, yeah. So he goes like this to try to like he, he wants to be by the stage to keep an eye on everyone. And he goes to lean back on the what he thinks is a wall behind this curtain and just, just disappears. <laughs> just <laughs> disappears. But I don't see it because it's over to my right. So I'm on stage. I'm like, all right, everyone's cool. All right, anyway. So I was at the mall the other day. I'm like setting something up. I guess this guy falls. Everyone's, the whole place just <laughs> explodes gross. laughter. I mean, people are standing up. They're throwing napkins in the air. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck is going on? Because I didn't even say anything <laughs> funny. I'm like, what is going on? And I turn over and I just see this guy's feet like <laughs> – <laughs> like, 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 yeah, and I'm just, and then I just start. I'm like, ah, oh, fucking cops, ah, oh, fuck the cops, and then they're like, Whoa! And, and then I, yeah, he got off. He was all so then it all calms down. And I had to then proceed to try to do 15 minutes of comedy, and nobody gave a fuck after that. Yeah, how, how are you going to compete with that shit? You know what I mean? Yeah, unfucking believable. Yeah, yeah we, had, we had one in. Uh, I love the hyenas club. We do the hyenas regularly. Where were we at? Fort Worth? That's Fort Worth. I know Fort you're Worth. Yeah. <laughs> I'm at the point where I don't really like drunk people anymore. <laughs> like, they're not fun to me. So I'm doing this. I guess I was closing out. I'm sure I was closing out. And uh, there's a lady front table, front and center table, and she's basically asleep. 
my whole set. I don't know. I, I think I went on last. I don't know how much of the show. You were, clo- you were closing out, yeah. So she's asleep through my whole set. And I said something about Florida. I don't know. And that triggered her. She's and she wakes up. From Miami. Was she from Miami? Of course, of course. And uh, she wakes up. She's. I, I mean, she was like, I feel like she was out cold in the front row. She's like hunched over and her boyfriend's watching the show and enjoying it. So I start talking to them. And then she reaches over. It was, yeah, it was definitely the end of the show. Because there was a there was a plate on the uh, the table next to her. And the people had left. Because, you know, it's the end of the show. She reaches over. And she grabs like the chicken wing off of their plate and just starts chowing on, chowing on it in front on the front row. And I'm, I'm talking to her and I look down and she's eating and I see that the plates, I'm like, did she grab that? And everyone around, like, like you didn't see the cop fall. Everyone had seen her do this. You know, everyone around her. I'm like, are you eating other people's food? Like I, it was so animalistic to me and she's <laughs> proud of it. And then there was another piece table of food over there she crawls across the stage and grabs that food and offers it i wanted to kick I, it was, it was a <laughs> i was so mad sticks. i was so mad like I, it wasn't fun anymore I, I, I should have had a little bit more fun with it and then the funny thing is the manager there his name's eric i see him he's in the showroom and i'm looking at him like what more does it take eric like oh, what, are you gonna, what are we gonna wait for she's crawling on the stage grabbing food and then offering it to people around her I had that a, was just my theory. Did you have that on tape? Did you, did you have a video of that shit? Yeah. Did I remember seeing? Okay, I thought I, I remember seeing that. See, I, <laughs> yeah. I was a little bit torn on that. I didn't want to really post it because I don't like glamorizing that shit or whatever, but I yeah. felt like it made her look stupid enough. I think my theory of why she didn't get thrown out was because she was she was pretty hot. It was also it was the end of the shit. Yeah. So, but she was like a hot girl. Like, like if you're hot, you can get away with shit. You lose a lot of points with me when you're like that. Really. <laughs> I mean, she had <laughs> yeah. blonde hair, probably big tits or whatever, but was it was hot. just like, yeah, they can get away. In in the, in the corporate world, is a in the corporate world, there's a saying called "sales cover multiple of sins," and you know sure. if you're yes. a producer and you're making yeah. money, you can get away with a lot of shit. And I think if you're hot and beautiful, that you get away. With, the people will tolerate that shit. You know how many people, how many guys you know, they're in relationships that should be over, but the pussy's so good they just can't leave. Um, yeah, everybody. You know, every guy <laughs> I've ever met. <laughs> she was maybe the worst crowd member I've ever had. Yeah, she said. That's fucking great. Right, well, the last, <laughs> the last question of uh, let me ask you guys: artificial intelligence, uh, trust it? End of the world, the big, uh, future. I couldn't be more against it. I, I I hate it. Don't like it. I know it's supposed to make certain things better and easier, but I think it's just gonna. I mean, is there a pro to it? Why do you Why do you need it? I don't need we it. We don't at all. need it. I like, think it's all. No, we don't I literally. I mean, I'm not like a conspiracy theory guy, but I. But, the, it's Skynet. It's gonna. The thing I don't like. Kill the us. thing I don't like about it, like we just did Palm Beach, and uh, uh, Chuck came in and from applause break came in and and did this thing with us, where oh yeah, had, <laughs> and I, huh? I saw you guys. Yeah, that, yeah. yeah, he had an AI <laughs> interview with us, and it was like not that far off from just talking to somebody. So I'm yeah. like. If it's doing that already, it's going to start writing movie scripts. It's going to start writing songs. And it's like, yeah. and the problem with that is it's going to gear itself to the things that people want. So it's going to be like TikTok, but in the real world. And it's like, right. people are going to hear a song that was written by someone, by a machine that knows to go verse, chorus, verse, bridge, verse, chorus, verse, you know, and have the same beat, the same tempo and the same chord progression. Everything's going to sound the same. And every article that you yeah. read is going to sound the same. And every fucking movie script is going to be the same. And it's going to show you how easy it is to just get over on people. Like you see, you see yeah. humans doing that. You see TV shows that I've seen the show before. And you see Ghostbusters 9 and fucking the car crash movie part 17. But there's not even going to be a human involved in it. Yeah. And I don't think it's that hard to teach artificial intelligence to write a dumb article, especially about the news, you know? You know? Yeah. It's all made up. I, I, I agree. I think there's a lot more risk than there is reward to that point. And, you know, they already, they already had the guy uh, with the one company that said it became sentient. Like the, he, for Google, he realized that it actually started, you know, thinking out loud and actually questioning. And, that, and what was the re- thing recently that they came out, the one guy was talking to it and he was already like telling the guy he needs to leave his wife. It was uh, <laughs> this artificial intelligence was telling one of the creators, you need to leave advice, your wife. You yeah. Gotta get the- <clears throat> yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. So I think you're right. I, I think it's definitely it's checking her respect. emails and her Facebook and shit. <laughs> exactly. Well, the thing is, Fucking ridiculous. Is it supposed, like, 
they said there's some practical things of it. Like it can do like tedious, like, a, like, a, like a, you know, you could make it a script and go through like tedious things and do tasks that humans don't want to do and yada, yada, yada. But to use it to create things like art, or well, yeah. uh, I mean, uh, that's definitely the way it's going to go. Whether course. it's art or music or, or, or scripts, it's going to go to creation. It's going to go to sales. It's going to go to understanding the stock markets. And it's, it's I don't know, man. I don't like it. But we already had we already had that in our business, robo robo uh, managers. And you put it into the it's all based on you know algorithms of the markets and stuff they buy. And so you already seen that effect that the markets sell off. There's certain couple things happen. Next thing you know, the market has a major sell off because you know the the robots read something in and they all started automatically selling everything. You know, um, all right. Well, it's, so, it's like uh, it's like with the, with, the, with the Tesla, it knows to move out of the way of this or that, but it, it's not processing really what this or that is. You know what right. I mean? And that's just going to, or like you, you, you happen to say something while you're holding your phone, like, Oh, that's an ugly ceiling fan. And then you get 15 fucking ads for ceiling fans on your phone. You know, it's not understanding the emotion behind what you're saying. It's just taking it. Right. Value. AI, they're the new migrant workers. They're taking our jobs. <laughs> we don't like it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it's definitely dangerous. All right. Let's get through this. Uh, the, our segment. Did you hear, here's some stories. And because uh, we're all Florida guys originally, I, I got some Florida stuff. And Florida on uh, Bob Levy, uh, uh, Tim on Bob Levy's situation was always talking about Florida, Florida, yeah. Florida man a bit. But uh, first story, wrong way driver crashes, blames oncoming cars for being in her way. That's what happens when you have a 20-year-old <laughs> Florida chick who, uh, when she was arrested, was like, why are you doing this? Well, you almost killed somebody, stupid. But uh, it reminds me of that old joke, right? I'm a... Uh, I'm driving home, you know, there's a lot of traffic. Tell me about it. You know, the guy's in the wrong fucking lane. Uh, the, again, no. Nope. Yeah, Florida is, you don't know, like my driving, stay off the sidewalk, right? You know what they say? <laughs> Florida drivers are absolutely, like we're talking about Do you miss Florida. I don't miss the driving in Florida at all. No, absolutely. You know what's funny? Every city says they have the worst drivers in the worst. No, driving. Florida has them. It's like, oh, it gets it gets congested here at five thirty. Yeah, that's every fucking drive through Florida yeah. for a little bit. Drive through Hialeah, <laughs> oh. just making their own shit up. Oh, yeah, yeah exactly. No, there's no the there's cab. no adherence. Get in the cab from the Miami airport and <laughs> see, what, see what happens. It's like going through the line oh. country safari. <laughs> Uh, our next story, Florida could ban dogs sticking their heads out of a car window. I'm is, that, is that real? I like that. I yeah. hate seeing a dog stick their head out the window. It fucking drives me nuts. I think they should be allowed to do it, but I just, I, 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 I get so nervous when I see that. I'm like, do you have that thing buckled in or what's going on? So what, it's, I just, it's like a ticketed thing. You can like get a ticket for that. Well, they're, they, I don't know what the actual penalty may be, but they're, they're, they're you know, they're, like I had a Jack Russell and I would, he obviously like all dogs, they love sticking their head out the fucking window, yeah. but I would always be yeah. nervous, especially the Jack, he'd see something yeah. jump out the fucking window at 40, 50 miles an hour. I think that's what they're trying to protect, you know, as yeah, opposed to just all that. And it stuck with me. I saw a dog jump, jump out there. I don't know yeah. if he was escaping or what. It was a big dog and he jumped out the window of the car while the car was driving. He's like, just. He's like helicopter and spun around. He was okay. Oh. He got up. It was fine. But it traumatized me. So now every time I see a dog, I'm like, no, roll that window up. No, there's a lot of or dogs. Or, you know, run get the yeah. head out. But don't put the window all the way down. I think yeah. it should be yeah. mandatory. See how crowded these pounds are? <laughs> the, the, the fucking humane societies? There's too many dogs. Let a couple jump out. Or, or, or I see a dog in the back of a pickup truck without a leash on it. I'm like, what are you doing, man? Yeah, yeah I'm sure yeah. your dog's smart enough to know that you're going to make a left turn and fucking two blocks right yeah right yeah i was amazed by that myself i was amazed by that myself yeah and, and you know it, it yeah it, and now you mentioned about artificial intelligence i like one of those things on facebook that showed it's this dog's birthday or they, they found this dog after being in the pound i'm like oh that's you know heart you know now i keep getting these things oh my my dog was put to sleep my dog I'm like fuck i can't take this shit anymore you know uh ridiculous uh, another Florida story, Florida medics suspended after dead patient found to be breathing. I'm not dead. I'm not dead. Down. Was it Friday at five? They wanted to go home. They're like, call it. What the fuck? <laughs> call yeah, it. They were heading to a dope city comedy show. Yeah, you got to get <laughs> out of there. Yeah. <laughs> fuck out of here. Uh, my friend's so going to do a guest so, spot. Yeah. <laughs> so who uh, who made the call that he was dead? It has to be a doctor, right? That says it. No, it was Did the it medics. Like, uh, yeah, medics. Oh, in the Clearwater, PMC Florida. Up, like, paramedics. 
Oh yeah, yeah two paramedics. Uh, two paramedics have been suspended after a man they pronounced dead was found to be breathing. Clearwater, I just saw that. Florida. Said, Become a paramedic in four months with four months training. I was like, I don't think that's enough. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's train those guys a little bit longer. These guys had the four month course, and they're like, "That's nothing we can do." <laughs> Well, dude, that whole thing, listen, that whole thing about equity now, you know, the big thing about e equality versus equity, you know, it's a big difference. You know, there, uh, a friend of mine who's in the business of airlines, he's like, you know, they have these air traffic controllers now. They have a lot of these accidents occurring, but they, you know, they, they, to make it easier, less, less stringent qualifications to become an air traffic controller. And that's why you're seeing a lot of these fuck ups. You know, I posted something a while ago. Hey, how, how great will it be if you, if you're all for equity, but then, you know, Next thing you know, you're on, you're on, you're on about to take off from an airplane and it crashes into another one when it's fucking trying to land. Are you still going to be happy about equity that somebody didn't have to go through the natural, the, the natural the progression day, of being quiet? The other day we had a woman pilot. I was freaking out. Oh my God. I was, I was, like, I was like, let me off this goddamn plane. Terrified. <laughs> <laughs> women felt like that too. They're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Who's yeah. going to take care of us? They just want to be helped. <laughs> how, how misogynistic is it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I listen. The, there's an old saying hey, hey, hey. like there's there, there's three people that you want to have gray gray hair: your pilot, your surgeon, and your fucking money manager. That was one of the things we always used to say. Right. Uh, but uh, yeah, you know, I mean that. that but that's the thing, you know. It, it, listen, every I want everybody to have opportunity. You know what I'm saying? But fuck, you know, you, you watch this shit in the news about these, you know, taking honor society away because the, the kids who aren't getting it, they're just boo woo hoo. They're upset. But now you're taking away the ability to fucking be better. You know, they're like. People deserve, you know, to be fucking, you know, like, yeah, in, like in our business, good. comedy, if you're fucking funny and you do, you, you deserve the gig. You know what I mean? You don't want to give it to just somebody, uh, oh, you know, you know, I just want to give this funny person a chance. The last thing that matters in comedy <laughs> anymore, buddy. <laughs> yeah, right. Fucking that anymore. Uh, our next door, uh, NASA confirms half a ton meteorite crashed in South Texas. I don't know if you guys felt it when you were there. Um, they no, actually found yeah, it. I, it. I saw it. I saw it. A yeah. doorbell video. Yeah, birds I flying and shit. Video. No, it's not that from us. Uh, it's far enough. I, but honestly, like nothing really happened. It, uh, I guess houses within like a certain radius felt like shit. Did it hit an open shakes, field? But yeah. What did it hit? Yeah, it landed pretty much an open field. They found this thing. It looks like, a, like this fucking big like a fucking rock. And they, the weird part is it broke up as it entered the atmosphere. So they found part of it in Texas and they found other parts of it in Paris and in Europe. Like, wow, that's a pretty oh, fucking... Shit spread out fucking what, what size uh, is the rock that hit here like a basketball uh probably yeah a little bigger something like that think about that size big elongated there's a lot. video of it coming like shooting across the sky people there's a lot of videos and dude the thing had a fucking tail like it it was huge it was bright too. they, they, they said before we, before it broke up it was about a thousand pounds they said Man, oh right about yeah. The size. yeah yeah it was pretty it was a, then it we broke can't see apart that stuff coming yeah, they knew it was coming. They knew it was coming. I didn't hear no warnings. I mean, well, they didn't have one on that. As a matter, of, matter of fact, the last thing they did, I don't know if you guys saw that thing about a few months ago when they tried that dart program when they crashed a like a refrigerator size uh, component of a, of a of a of a satellite into a moving uh, asteroid, and they were and they noted NASA noted that it actually affected the course of this. And my friends like, really? oh, we're gonna. Yeah, so my friend's like, oh, how's that going to stop a big meteor? I go, listen, these NASA scientists will know if, if this much weight, the weight of a refrigerator, moved the course of this size ass, now they just got to equate it out and determine, now they can right. make calculations and say, well, if we really need to move something that's really a fucking earth ender, you know, if we're going to hit it with a nuclear blast, how much can it fucking hit if he sent out some sort of major uh, uh, fucking thing on there? So, uh, yeah, interesting. Uh, next story, bizarre study says people can live on an asteroid. Uh, it's actually a brilliant idea. I guess it'd be hard to get your mail. Um, Airbnb. So I said you exactly. live on an asteroid. How can you live on an asteroid? It's got no well, it's not, atmosphere. Scientists, scientists say it's possible. I guess you wouldn't age that much because you're traveling pretty fast. And, um, sure. you know, I mean, so much. Age? I mean, I don't. Well, the faster Wait, you really travel, less you're not a smart guy. But if you're traveling fast, you don't Quantum age. physics. Well, one of the most recent things they show was that those two brothers that were twins, one of the guys went, he was in the space, the, you know, the space station and he had a twin brother. When he came back after being up there for a year or two, he aged, he looked different. He was completely different than the guy who was on earth. 
because mm. it actually it's like this it's a it's einstein's theory you know relativity and shit but but uh yeah so uh listen if you don't want to get heavy matt and you don't want to age just get on a fucking asteroid and you'll keep that girlish figure of yours yeah. um or yeah plus you can't you can't really get a fast food fucking restaurant can't eat a fast food restaurant no. when you're living on an asteroid they got those um, astronaut fucking everywhere's going on asteroids <laughs> that's the next oh, best place and whether an asteroid hits us or not is this a sign of end of times lightning strikes brazil's iconic statue of christ the redeemer here's some photos what? of it i mean the, yeah that look at I mean, there you go yeah. like the, 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 the antichrist is um, is born i said it's been hit a few times one that this one didn't damage it a few few years ago it hit it and uh christ's Ooh. thumb broke off so Whoa. I guess he's not going to get any, going to hitchhike any rides uh, out of Brazil. He needs that gun. Yeah. They what? changed the and, color uh, of it. Uh, are, are, are people, uh, are people making like a big, uh, a big thing out of this? Like it's going to be the end of the Mayan calendar. Well, hey, listen, we we've already talked about. Really yeah. yeah, listen. There, there was a, there was a questionable election in Brazil uh, recently. That might be you know, somebody's going to probably bring that shit up, but. Nevertheless, you know, we talked about artificial intelligence. We've talked about what's happening in Ukraine and everything. Uh, you know, what the fucking China is making moves and shit. I mean, some people think we're we're near the end. And like, in other words, you know, we're at that point. Uh, I, I, I mean, will say, yeah. I, I will say that this is. Uh, I mean, like everything kind of does suck now. Everything sucks. Now. You know, what I'm it's saying? Like, like, everything sucks. What's good? Nothing's good. No, it's all everything's shit. Oh my god! I'm always like, remember when this used to work? You go somewhere and do something, and I was like, COVID, COVID fucked a lot of things up. I mean, go to like any yeah, restaurant, go to any though. service, everything sucks now. And then like, also, yeah. you can't. You we can't. checked into a hotel in San Diego. I was like, so you got breakfast? He's like, oh no, no, no breakfast. I'm like, so you're still playing the fucking COVID? Then we can't, you can't serve us a fucking pop tart in the morning. No, no, no we, can't. <laughs> we go outside. Yeah. We go outside. The pool has a big giant chain on it. I'm like, what's up with the pool? He's like, oh, it's it's closed right now. COVID. Yeah, COVID. COVID. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, it's fucking 23. What are you doing? And it's just like, that's yeah. just how it is now. It just sucks. It is, ama- it is oh, amazing wow. when you go to certain parts of the country and they're handling, obviously Florida, everybody jokes about how Florida, COVID never even existed in Florida, in comparison. Mm-hmm. South Carolina, okay. same thing here. Yeah, and, you know, and like Texas, like, you guys like Florida. And, you know, I, I, I'm still amazed. Like, you know, I see people walking outside with fucking masks on. It's like, oh, my God. You know, like, what are you fucking thinking? You know what I mean? I don't, and people, see, you know, I don't see it often. When I do now, because I, I, I'll forget about COVID completely. And then I'll see some of the mask and I'll almost be like, what's, it, what's this guy on his face? I'm like, oh, that's right. There's like, I forget. Like, I don't care. It's been three up. years, man. I just, if, yeah. if, if you're masking because you got symptoms, then fucking stay home. Don't come to yeah. the comedy show. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I was in New yeah, York I, I, a couple of days ago, and I saw, you know, people would be on the trains, but the train's kind of gross, so I can kind of understand that, you know? But if you're wearing that mask all day long, I just... Why was I, yeah. One of the one of the, my, my restaurant servers has a mask on. I'm like, mm. you're, you're still wearing that every day, four years into this thing? I don't know, man. Yeah. I love it. The people in the restaurant that wear it, but don't cover their nose. It's like, what? Just take the fucking thing off. If you're not going to cover your nose, <laughs> you know, you're breathing out of your fucking nose and you got your mouth covered. Uh, I wonder it, what you know, percentage of people who are still wearing the mask are, are legitimately doing it for health reasons or if it's just the, hey, look at me. I'm, I'm one of the good guys. Kind I don't of think thing. they're getting a whole lot of accolades by wearing it anymore. You know, I don't know. I, but I, I, don't know. I think Matt, I, I think Matt's right. It. I think most of them, I think most people do it just because they're they're acting like they're you know, they're better or they're just concerned or that you know they the want same, to show the like they're. Is, it's the same thing. Like if you act like a word offended you or something like that. Like what are you, you're just trying to act like you're holier than now. Man. I saw that uh, Jen Kirkman. She's a comic. She posted on her Instagram or something that she was at either JFK or LaGuardia, one of the New York airports. And she said, I'm the only one in this whole airport wearing a mask. And I was like, all right, first off, that's it's not close. To, there's no way you're in, a, in an airport in New York. This is three months ago. And like, people, again, that's somebody going like, look at me. I'm the only person. I'm like, please, are you, fuck, are you kidding me? And yeah. also, if you are the only, you probably take it off at this point. You know what I mean? If you're, <laughs> yeah, you're the only, the only one, one wearing it. 
And then it's like, I, I fly every week, no matter what you think. There's still, you're going to see 100 people in the, in the airport wearing a mask. Yeah, it's still, I mean, it's not all of us, but there's still a lot of people that haven't left their house that are wearing a mask. I promise you, if you walk around LaGuardia, you'll see a 1,000 people wearing a mask. She's yeah. like, I'm the only one wearing it. Okay. All right. Well, Someone wants to yeah. wear a mask. Okay, here's your trophy. I don't care. Wear it, but don't like, <laughs> exactly. uh, I'm going to patch it back for it. I don't give a shit. You're right. And that, and that's and what you know, I think. Yeah. I was like, if you're wearing a mask, I'm like, what's wrong with that guy? <laughs> Should he be out? Yeah, Should, yeah. exactly. You got a rash exactly. or something? What's going on? Yeah, it, it, exactly. And, you know, again, with the va- like somebody brought the vaccine again to me. I'm like, look, because I never got vaccinated. I've had COVID twice. You know, so it's like, oh, like, well, you don't believe in vaccines. I'm like, dude, first of all, how does any like how can you defend this fucking thing when a when you get it, you still get it. You still transfer it. <laughs> you know, he's, what the fuck? I mean, you, you well, you, you don't go to the hospital like 97 percent of the people who get COVID don't go to the hospital. So what's your fucking point? You know, it's a, it, to me, it's a joke. You know, like, listen, I got the shingles vaccine. Why? Because it fucking yeah. works. You know, yeah, uh, so sometimes I'm anti-vax. Yeah, yeah, it's just it, and you're right. This righteousness of people has just been just been nuts across the country. You know, people that oh, you don't know you, your misinformation. It turns out much of the things you thought were fucking good were misinformation, you know. Right. You know, so it, it's like yeah, a lot of distrust in the uh, government, that, especially with this fucking tanker explosion. The fuck what's happening in, in Palestine, Palestine, uh, Ohio, for God's sakes. I mean, what a fucking nightmare that was. So a, lot of, a train. A train. <laughs> I don't read the news. What happened? Train crash. Jesus Christ. There was some chloride, oh, hydrogen, uh, some yeah. chemical yeah. chemical spill in uh, Palestine, Palestine, Ohio. Uh, and they thought it'd be better to do a controlled explosion. And it fucking looked like a mushroom cloud went up. And, and it had this really bad chemical that when it combines with water, turns into acid rain. And it turns into a ca- carcinogenic type fucking chemical. And, and you know, awesome. Peter Buttigieg never showed up. The transportation secretary... Biden goes to fucking Ukraine, doesn't go to there. So the people are pretty fucking pissed. And uh, I think it was today, the, the local people, some EPA, and everybody started drinking out of tap water out of somebody's kitchen just to prove the water was good. It'd been funny if they all started fucking... <laughs> you know, started fucking dying. Uh, you know, liquid coming out of their ears and shit. Poison yeah, it's... chemical goes everywhere. And their solution was to burn it off. <laughs> so they lit the yeah. whole thing on fire. Yeah, 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 yeah fucking... airborne. No. Else, like vinyl chloride. Let's wrap it's up the show, it. fellas. Let's wrap up the yeah. show. Uh, let's play uh, Let's Associate. Here's where I'll give you guys a few terms, and you guys tell me not only a word or perhaps a story that you associate or feel comfortable uh, with it. Uh, let's start with the phrase bombing. Facile. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I'll go with uh, Ukraine. Okay. They're dropping right. bombs over there, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Some somebody please tell Fossil to stop posting some of these videos. Um, <laughs> it you never know. happened. I'm just I'm always I'm always amazed at the, the choices some people make when they post videos. You know what I mean? It's like confusing, isn't it? I don't. Yeah. I it's don't like, know. I'm like you didn't have to post that. Nobody's asking to see 45 seconds of silence and awkwardness. So that's yeah. not fast. I just mean it. No, exactly. I, and I you know, you, you're like, most of the if girls you, are just trying to show off their crop tops. <laughs> and to me, it's like, if, if, this is, my new outfit. if this is the one you posted, what's the one you decided not to post? Um, yeah. It's always scary. Uh, feedback. Guitar. Ooh, I'll go with, I just think the word positive. I don't know. Positive feedback. The first word that, you when I hear feedback. That? No, I don't. But I just, I it's the feedback. first word that came to give me any fucking feedback. Well, it's funny. Somebody posted on Facebook. I read it today that uh, it's like generally. I think it was uh, t- uh, I'm trying to make. He opens for John Chris. I'm coming up with his name out of Colorado, but he said it's like normal for us as comics. If somebody really sucks or doesn't do well, you don't really tell them. You don't want to bust their bubble and stuff, you know. And um, you know, because that's a thing too. You know, like I've had that said. But one of my buddy here, Tom Emmons, local comic, is like somebody asks him, "Hey, what'd you think of my set?" He usually says, "I'm not good at that." I'm not good at giving fucking, and I, I think that's a great answer, man. I like that. I'm not good at that. Much like because, comedy, I'm not good at that. <laughs> that's a good um, yeah, because well, I, you know, I, that, like, as far as feedback, like I won't, I just, I don't have the energy to worry about someone else. Like if I see a comic that could use some advice, I just won't offer it. 
if they yeah. ask me, that's a different story. But I'm not I'm not offering like, hey, yeah, that, that joke's bad. Well, and how often does it ever get received in a good way? No. I mean, never yeah. does. So, you know. Yeah. I mean, I listen, I've been as a former athlete and mar you know, I, I, the best advice I ever got was when somebody told me I didn't do have a good set. You know, it's like, you got a lot to learn. You know what I mean? I was like, Oh shit. Cause it, it grounded me to what I needed to do. Right. But, uh, but for the most part, you're right. People can't, you know, just can't take see, that. That's probably somebody that cared about you or cared about how well you did. I just, I see someone doing that. I'm saying, I don't care. Like, yeah. Right, yeah. Not, not unsolicited me. advice is, is like, like you're saying, Tim, if somebody asks you, I'll even say, do you want, you want to hear, you want to hear the truth or do you, do you really want to know my opinion or do you just want me to, you know, Pat you on the back and put you on your way. Um, uh, social media. Gay. Fucking hate it. <laughs> suck. That's another that thing. Suckle. I don't like social media. I don't like what it. Uh, I don't like what it's done to comedy. It, it's, yeah. it's, it's taken. Uh, God. I mean, I'll talk for half an hour about this. I know we're wrapping up. But like, yeah, it's just. It's awful because for the same reason, the reason people can't take advice and, and all that, it, it, it comes from a social media thing. Everybody wants to be a headliner immediately. They want to go from you know, these guys are two years in the comedy and they get good with their videos and their the fucking videos are blowing up and they're like, all right, I'm ready to hit the road and headline. I'm like, dude, you, you skipped the whole getting good at comedy. <laughs> like, and, and that's the thing too, is with the, the with, with the social media, you're not, it's not like, oh, I'll put these videos up there and I'll find my audience. It, you need to follow this strict algorithm and, and put up exactly what the little algorithm God wants and it'll put it out there. And I'm like, well, I don't have a lot of fucking wokey or whatever joke, whatever the jokes are, but like, it's gotta be, you can't have swearing. You, you have to do this. It's gotta be clean. It's gotta be shot this this well. It's, it's gotta, right. you can't, God, when you talk about a controversial topic or if you say, yeah, I mean, honestly, not to make it a whole political thing, but if you go, if you go any, if you if you go anything that's like anti whatever they're trying to push, you just get buried in the fucking algorithm. So it's I'm like, what what, what is this? What are we doing? You know, the other thing is done. It's like gatekeepers aren't bad. <laughs> like it's it's now it's given everyone that's done comedy for two months the opportunity to share that with the world. And like, yeah, I don't know. I don't think we need it yet. You know what I mean? It used yeah. to be if you you worked at it for a couple of years, maybe you could get on a decent stage and you know, 300 people could see you. And now it's like, if you just want to do comedy, you just do it in a fucking bar and then post it. And it's, I don't know. It's, it's not to me. It's not good. It's, I, it's I, true. I, what I, you know. said, it, it's true. What you said, Matt, I had a, I was working with Quinn Dale uh, recently and he's obviously great at his TikToks and his, he's gotten off TikToks. He said they have been shadow banning him a bit on because of that material and some things. But he says, you got to put your interracial joke. So I have a joke on uh, interracial dating. Facebook didn't let me push it a little bit because it's a, considered a dating site. Like, have you guys even watched the fucking video? And it's amazing because I changed the title of the same video to uh, intera uh, interracial couple. And now I was able to push it and it, it's doubled already in views. Right. Because, and it's the same fucking video. Same fucking <clears throat> video. So it's amazing. Um, and, next and word is hack. Slaves. Oh, hack. Then, I'll, 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 I'll hack. I'll say social media. <laughs> that's, that's what comes to my algorithm. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what that, and that's again. That's the problem with it. It's like the social media pushes the same shit you've always seen. And that's the thing with hack. It's like, that's why I like comedy. I like, I want to hear someone's point of view. I want to hear someone's opinion. I want to hear the same old fucking shit. Yeah, it's it's funny how hack changes though throughout the throughout the years, you know. Hack's a weird term because I don't I don't think I'm not a big I'm not a big like oh this is hack that's hack. I feel like everything's been talked about. I yeah. mean, it's, it's unless you're telling like a unique story that just happened to you. Like let me tell the story about my wedding night or whatever. like something. All right, that's unique. But like any, just, anything observational in any way, it's been said or done. It's it's you got to make it in your own original way and yeah. do it in your voice and. Hack to me, yeah, like stealing is bad, but like, but also the, the, this social media and this algorithm is, it's pushing hack. It wants you just to go up yeah. there yes. and some girl be like, dating's tough, you know, and then, and then it pushes it. But like, yeah, hack, I don't know, hack, hack, I, don't know. I saw a guy do, I saw a guy do a, a, a joke. I sent it to you. It was a joke. I don't remember it, but it was a, a premise that's been fucking beaten to death. Oh, it was about trans athletes right but the guy had a funny punchline on it mm -hmm. and i was like oh that's that's how you do it to a hack subject 
and make it good. Right. But, you know, the, what's, what's the, the half now? Is, uh, I don't know. Where the fuck these kids are going? I don't know. I, it's crazy. I feel so disconnected with the, the new kind. Oh, you know what's <laughs> what the hack joke I hate now is the is ab- abortion stuff, you know, where it's like, fucking, there's no delivery or, I had an abortion joke, but it wasn't ready. I had an abortion joke. I had to throw it away. Whatever. Sorry. Throw your whole act away. <laughs> I remember uh, Chris, Chris Baum had an abortion. Chris Chris Rowe used to do that abortion joke where he said, "Yeah, you know, he had the whole he's the same thing. Like, yeah, it's, it wasn't ready yet, so I got rid of it or whatever. And then Mark Norman put that same joke on his special. I mean, we've all seen 30 billion comics do it. But Chris posted like, oh, I, I, another famous comic stealing my joke. I'm like, Chris, they're not stealing your joke, but you know, <laughs> Just, yeah, it's yeah. That's all. I, the only time I ever saw somebody steal that joke, they actually did steal it, was at the Funky Buddha one time. This local guy who had been there, seen, I know he's seen Chris get on stage before and he was bombing. So he went to Chris's joke. And after the show, he walked off the fucking stage of the Funky Buddha. I go, dude, you just did Chris Topher's fucking joke, bro. He's like, oh, did I? I'm like, don't give me that bullshit. You fucking seen oh, him do it a hundred fucking times. I know you yeah. fucking lifted it. But, and you knew, you knew he stole it because he was bombing and he was just reaching into, to try to find yeah. something because to help his ego. Um, and uh, with that being, let's uh, close out that with joke thief. Hmm. I'm going to name names. <laughs> no. I guess well, no guys word association. Mencia is, uh, is the only thing that comes to mind immediately, yeah. but and Amy Schumer is pretty fucking bad. At it. Schumer grips. Yeah. Grips I mean, while you guys are like, thinking, like I'm going to share this that. with you. I'm going to share this with you. A close friend of our, all of ours, uh, Cisco. Right. Love the kid. He's a good dude. You know, con- you know, con- congratulations to the guy for everything he's doing. But, you know, I he I Never did a joke. At the, I did a joke. <laughs> I did a joke at the Miami. I think, Improv, I think you one, covered him on the last four fucking subjects. <laughs> well, <laughs> well <laughs> in all fairness, pack, thief. <laughs> and, and there he is, is working this fuck. But you know, I, I did a I did my joke. I have a joke that says, "Listen, I was uh, I went water skiing the other day. I was supposed to be parasailing." You know, that was the joke. It's a quick, you know what I mean. And it, and then literally after doing that joke, a month later, he comes up with his parasailing joke. Different joke, nevertheless. I'm like, all right, I get it. You know, so I did a show in Miami, and he was sitting right there in the fucking front. And before the show, he's telling me, he's like, he's like, look, man. He goes, he goes, I need, I need to come up with new material. I got to work on new shit. And there he was sitting there in the middle of this fucking set I was doing. So I called a local uh, a friend of ours that knows him very well. I won't mention his name, Will, Will fucking Lopez. And he and he's like, he, he, I asked him, Will, I said, you're going to be working on this. Just do me a favor. I don't know if it, it's happening or not, but if he happens to tell a joke about this, or just just let me know because I'm just curious. You know what I mean? I kind of feel that vibe. And you guys know, as comics, you know when somebody does that shit. Yeah. And what does Will do? He goes to fucking Cisco and he tells him, Doug thinks you're stealing his jokes. So if then Cisco unfriends me and all this shit, I'm like, oh my God. And then fucking course Will denies saying it and all this shit. I'm like, look, dude. So I'm no longer friends with Will, Will Lopez. But, you know, it's like, that's why open mic. Sometimes you go out of town, you're in a club and you go, oh, I'm going to go to the open mic. I, that's one of the things you worry about because you're going to tell a joke and, and half the comics in there go, oh, that's a new premise I'm going to start working on. You know what I mean? Well, I think with stealing jokes is one of those things where there's smoke, there's fire. Yeah. If you're being accused of stealing jokes frequently, you probably you're stealing jokes. People don't tell me I steal jokes because I don't do it. Okay, you know, like if you're stealing, you try. if you, but if people are telling, because we, I mean, it's funny because there's always like we all know those guys where like a, a comical walk in the room, like you said, like at a mic or a show, and everyone starts going, "Oh, fuck, here we go, yeah, oh, boy, I'm not gonna do this one now." You know, if you're that person, you're probably stealing jokes. <laughs> like it's yeah. not. And see, we were doing we were doing Addison Improv, and then see, and Cisco came by. And they come in the green room. We're about to, you know, show's about to start. And it's like, I couldn't have less respect for Carlos Mencia. And he comes into our green room. Well, like, we were talking about doing spots and shit. Like, I've known Cisco for a long time. So it's like, you want to do a We spot? gave him a spot. Go ahead. Yeah. But I told these guys, I said, if Mencia wants to go up there, there's not a chance he's doing a spot on our show. No fucking way. I don't even want to be associated with the guy. And he was polite enough in the room. But I just, I can't have less. Like, why are you even doing this if, if you steal jokes? I don't know, man. And then, and then, uh, the other guy we were with, it's like, oh, he's going to steal our jokes. I'm like, Mencia's not doing any of my <laughs> like, <laughs> our stuff is safe for Mencia's uh, set. Like, yeah. he's not taking any of my 
Well, well, I remember I, I, Franco even said that. He's like, he's like, you guys are safe, but he's like, he's going to take my whole act. <laughs> like, yeah, well, who would you take it from? <laughs> he's passing it on. <laughs> well, yeah, it's like Lenny Travis used to say, when you steal from me, you're stealing twice. Um, yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> Uh, I'll mention this about uh, about uh, uh, about Tim, which is funny. I remember when they had that uh, f- uh, the comedy contest at the at the Miami, you know, the, to open for fucking uh, 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 Carlos, Carlos Mencia. And Tim says, "I want to yeah. jo- I want to enter that contest just so I can win, and I'll go up and do all his fucking material." Yeah, <laughs> uh, I would. I probably would. I wouldn't have won. Had I won, I would one hundred percent would have done that. One hundred percent. You went up there and did Cosby shows. <laughs> yeah, yeah. big Cosby shows. fan. So you yeah. guys are probably going to yeah. recognize this next joke. <laughs> That's fucking great. Well, fellas, I want to thank you for being here on the Wake Up Play with Dougie show. And I also want to wish Bye, you guys man. continued success on the Dope City Comedy Tour. If you happen to be in a town where you can see the Dope City Comedy Tour. Uh, be sure to check these guys out. Very funny and uh, very, like a very original, very unique style of comedy that you can enjoy uh, straight from the heart. Uh, anything? What's coming up? You guys like to push or plug? Yeah, we got a couple. We're, Arizona, we're doing temp, uh, Tempe and Phoenix. Uh, Phoenix March first, Tempe March second. Uh, we're doing Bricktown Comedy Club, Oklahoma City March twenty third. Quick town. That's a good one. March yeah. what's the name? March twenty third. March twenty third. Always a fun show. Great club. And we got a weekend uh down in June in Dallas and stuff. But we got some avails coming in. Um we should be announcing some stuff for April and May pretty soon. So just any follow anything Dope City Comedy, Instagram, Facebook, yeah. all that jazz. Okay, see. Dallas, Fort Worth. Yeah. You know. Awesome. There you go. Catch these guys. Very good, uh, very funny show. Be sure to check it out. Uh, as for me, I'm going to head to California this week. I'm going to be in the SLO Comedy Festival, and then I'm going to be oh, nice. in your old home. I'm going to be in your town uh, in uh, Bowling. Well, not there, but basically in Illinois, Bowlingbrook at uh, CG's oh, yeah. Comedy Club. I'll be headlining that. I think it's the 18th, 19th, or so 11th. Uh, I can't remember the dates. Uh, go to CG's for dates. Come out there because I'm a little concerned. I want to make sure. Is that a woke area? Is that a liberal area of uh, Illinois? Not really. I mean – Unfortunately, sh- Chicago itself is going to be, but Bolingbrook is, is no, it's, it's pretty much middle America. Good. Yeah. Well, there you go. So I don't have to worry about my material. Yeah. So anyway, no, uh, with, that be- with that being said, guys, thanks so much for watching the show. Be sure to uh, go to our YouTube page, subscribe, because that's where the shows are going to be shown all the time. Be a fan of our fan page. You can catch all the funny clips and uh, follow us on Twitter at Wake Up Dougie or Wake Up Doug. Uh, God bless you guys. Take care, and we'll see you next time right here at the same spot. Yeah. <laughs>